Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to the next video in the Infrastructure as Code on AWS with Terraform playlist, where we'll take a look at Terraform modules. Before we get started, I want to mention that this video picks up with the code that we wrote in the prior video, Terraform Fundamentals. So if you aren't familiar with Terraform concepts such as providers, variables, and commands such as init, validate, plan, and apply, you may want to go and check that video out before moving forward. I'll add a link to it in the description below in case you're interested. Now let's move on and take a look at Terraform modules. Here we can see in the documentation that modules are containers for multiple resources that are used together and that they are the main way to package and reuse resource configurations within Terraform. Also, we see here that every Terraform configuration has a root module, which consists of the root resources defined in the .tf files in your project's main working directory, or the root folder. If we jump into VS Code inside of our working project folder from the last video, we see we have several TF files. And if we look in the VPC, we see we have one resource defined which is a type of AWS VPC. So this is the root module in our current configuration. Now, root modules can call or reference other modules to include resources into the configuration. And a module that is referenced by another module is referred to as a child module. Jumping back into VS Code, you see I've created a new folder for this video named two underscore Terraform underscore modules. And I've copied all the .tf files from the Terraform Fundamentals project. Here we have our main TF and our VPC, which is an AWS VPC resource. And just to make sure we're in a good starting place before we start making modifications, I'll go ahead and execute a Terraform init, which will pull down our AWS provider from the HashiCorp registry. Now I'll run a Terraform validate, and that looks good. So now I'll run a Terraform plan. And here we see the plan will add one resource, which is our AWS VPC, and we'll output the VPC ID after the apply completes. So now I'll run Terraform apply with auto approve. And we see the apply is complete with one resource added and we have the ID for our VPC. And if we jump into the AWS VPC console, go into VPCs, we see our CC VPC has been added. Now jump back into the terminal and delete our resource. So the destroy is complete, one resource has been destroyed. We'll just jump back into the console, refresh, and now we're back to our default VPC. Now, what I'd like to do is turn this VPC resource into a module, which is referenced or called from main TF. So I'll start out by creating a new folder named modules, and then inside the modules folder, I'll create another folder named VPC. Then I'll take the vpc.tf file from the root folder and put it in the modules VPC folder. Now, to reference the VPC module inside of the main TF, I'll start with the module keyword and give the module a name. Then I'll specify the source, which is the path from the current folder to inside the modules folder, then the VPC folder, and run a Terraform validate, and we'll see we have an error module not installed, and it's looking for the CC VPC module we just declared in the main TF. And this is because we need to run Terraform init to install the module into our configuration. Just like when we first ran Terraform init, it went out and it pulled down the AWS provider we also need to initialize the project with our new module. 
and we'll have to do that anytime we add a module to the project. So I'll go ahead and run Terraform init, and we'll see that the module ccvpc in the modules slash vpc folder has been initialized. And if we jump into the dot terraform folder in our projects root folder, now we see we have two folders, the providers for the AWS provider and a modules folder, which if we open the modules.json file, we see we have a module for the CC VPC. Now, just a note, we should never manually modify anything inside of the dot terraform folder. I'm just coming in here to show you where the module has been installed after we declared it in the main TF and ran Terraform in it. Now, looking inside our VPC template, we see we have two properties, CIDR blocks and tags. And these are populated from variables. And in the root folder of our project, we have a variables.tf file, which has the variable declarations for the VPC CIDR and VPC tags. And we have a terraform.tf vars file, which specifies the values for those variables. Now, since we referenced the variables inside the VPC template, which is in the new modules VPC folder, we also need to take a copy of the variables file and put that in the VPC folder as well. So now that when we reference the variables inside of the VPC template, they're resolved in the variables.tf file. We'll still keep the values in the terraform.tf vars file in the root folder, because back in main, we could reference those values when we pass them into the VPC when it's instantiated as a module. And to pass them in, I'll add the following two lines. So this says we have a module named VPC. Its source is in the module slash VPC folder, which references the VPC template. Then I have a property named VPC CIDR, which is equal to the variable VPC CIDR. That's declared inside of the variables.tf file and populated from the value in the terraform.tf vars. So inside of the AWS VPC resource, when we set the value for the CIDR block property, we could grab it from the variable VPC CIDR passed in from main. And we'll do the same for the VPC tags. Now I'll go ahead and save the files, jump back into the terminal, do a Terraform format, and a Terraform validate. And it looks like we have an error in the outputs.tf file, which says we have an undeclared resource of AWS VPC. So let's jump back into VS Code. We'll open up the outputs file. In here, we see we're outputting the VPC ID with its value pointing to AWS VPC. However, in main TF, we no longer have an AWS VPC resource because we moved the VPC template into the module slash VPC folder. So the way to resolve this is instead of referencing the AWS VPC, we now want to reference the module. So the value will be equal to module.ccvpc, which is the name we've given to the module. And then instead of referencing the ID property, because we don't want the ID of the ccvpc module, we want the ID of the VPC. So in order to reference the VPC ID, we need to output it inside of the module. So inside the modules VPC folder, I'll create a new file named outputs.tf and add an output block named VPC ID, setting its value equal to the AWS VPC resource named ccvpc inside of our VPC template and grabbing its ID. So now with the outputs file declared inside of the module, we can reference the VPC ID from the module inside of main. So let's save all these files and jump back into the terminal, do a Terraform format again, and a Terraform validate. And that looks good. So now we'll do a Terraform plan. And a Terraform apply. and our VPC resource was added, and we had the VPC ID in the outputs declared inside of the outputs file in our root project folder.
Now, when we pass the value the VPC CIDR in from the terraform.tfvars file, the CIDR set to 10.0.0.0 slash 16. But because this is a variable, the user can change it to declare a different CIDR block. For instance, I could change the 16 to 24. Then if I go back to the terminal and run a Terraform plan, we'll see that if this plan is executed, the VPC will be replaced and the CIDR block will be changed from 10.0.0.0 16 to slash 24. So if it's the case that we have a value for a variable that we don't want the user to modify, we can implement something called local variables inside of our module. So in our VPC folder, I'll create a new file named locals.tf and inside I'll declare a locals block and paste in the value we want for our VPC CIDR. I'll save this file and then in the VPC, instead of referencing var.vpc CIDR, I'll reference local.vpc CIDR. Now if we jump back into the terminal and run Terraform plan again, we'll see that we have no changes to our configuration. And that's because even though in main, we're passing in a value for the VPC CIDR of var.vpc CIDR, which comes from the terraform.tf vars file, specifying a slash 24, we implement a local variable inside of the module, which sets the VPC CIDR to slash 16. So now that we no longer need to pass this variable in when we instantiate the instance of the VPC inside of our main TF file, we can delete the VPC CIDR property, which passed in the variable value for the VPC CIDR. We can jump into the variables TF file and delete this variable block. And inside of the terraform.tfvars file, we could delete the CIDR. Now, jumping over to the variables.tf file inside of our module, we could delete this variable block save all the files, jump back into a terminal, we'll run a Terraform format, a Terraform validate, and a Terraform plan. And again, we see we have no changes to our infrastructure, so our code is currently in a good place using the VPC module with variables which are passed in from the main TF declared inside of the module, as well as in the variable.tf file, and getting the values for the VPC tags from the terraform.tf vars file. Then inside of the VPC, we also have a variable for the VPC tags, but the value for the VPC CIDR is coming from the locals.tf file and referenced as local.vpc CIDR inside of the VPC configuration. Okay, so now that our infrastructure is in a good place and we're creating our VPC, which is defined as a module, Let's add some more AWS resources to this infrastructure. And we'll start by adding an internet gateway to our VPC. So inside of the VPC configuration, I'll add a new resource, which is type AWS internet gateway. And I'll give it a local name of CCIGW. Here, I'm just gonna hard code the tags so that I don't have to pass them as variables, although we already know how to do that and I'll give the VPC ID a value going to the AWS VPC resource named CCVPC, which is declared above, and grabbing its ID. Now, what I wanna do is create NAT gateways in two different availability zones. So in addition to defining the NAT gateways, we'll also have to define the public subnets. First, we'll go ahead and declare a resource block for an AWS EIP, for our first NAT gateway. Then I'll add a resource for an AWS NAT gateway, which will be our first NAT gateway. I'll set the allocation ID equal to the AWS EIP resource named CC NAT gateway EIP one, which we just declared above and getting its ID property. And then the subnet ID will come from the AWS subnet we're about to declare. So here's our resource declaration for the AWS subnet named CC public subnet one. Its VPC ID will come from the AWS VPC dot CC VPC resource created above and grabbing its ID. The CIDR block for the subnet will be passed in as a variable 
as will the availability zone. So now let's just jump down and create the resources for our second EIP, NAT gateway, and public subnet. Again, the values for these properties will come from the resources declared above, as well as from variables which are passed in when the resource is provisioned. Now, since these will be variables, we'll jump into the variables.tf file inside of our module and add variable blocks for the AZs and the public ciders. Both of these will be a list of strings. And since these values need to be passed in when the resource is provisioned, we'll jump into the main TF file and add properties for the AZs and the public subnet ciders. Now, you'll see that these are coming from local variables which we'll create for availability zones and public subnet ciders. And since I'm specifying to get the locals inside the main TF in our root project folder, I could go ahead and create a locals.tf file inside of the root. Then I'll add values for the availability zones and the public subnet ciders of 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and 10.0.1.0-24. And if you watched the prior video in this playlist, Terraform Fundamentals, you'll recall that the types for these variables are lists of strings and the values in the lists are accessed by the index. So to get US East 1A from the availability zones, it would be the availability zones variable name index position zero. And to get the second cider from the public subnet ciders variable, it would be index position one. Now with the files saved, let's jump into the terminal, do a Terraform format, and a Terraform validate. And since our current configuration is valid, let's go ahead and move on and create private subnets for our EC2 instances. So back inside of the VPC, I'll add resource types of AWS subnet for the first private subnet and the second. The VPC IDs will come from the AWS VPC created above and the CIDR and AZs will come from variables. So let's now jump into the variables.tf file inside of our module and add a variable block for the private subnet CIDRs, which will be a list of strings. Then inside the locals TF file in our root folder, we'll add our private subnet CIDRs of 10.0.3.0 24 and 10.0.4.0 24. And finally in the main.tf, we'll pass the private subnet ciders in from the private subnet ciders declared in the locals.tf. Now, going back to our diagram, we'll add route tables for our public and private subnets. So inside the VPC, we'll add resources for AWS route tables, one for the public and one for the private, as well as resources for the AWS route table associations. Now we'll just jump back into a terminal and format our code and run a Terraform validate, which is successful. Now, before we go ahead and execute the plan, there's one more change I wanna make here, and that's to pass the VPC CIDR into the AWS VPC resource as a variable to be consistent with how we're passing the other variables in. So I'll go ahead and change local to var and then inside the variables.tf file I'll add a new variable for the VPC cider which is a type of string. Then since we no longer need the locals tf file in the VPC module I'll go ahead and delete the file and then in the locals tf file in the project's root folder I've added an entry for the VPC cider. And finally, in the main TF file, I'm passing the VPC CIDR in with a value from the local.vpc CIDR. So with all the files saved, we'll jump back into the terminal, format our code, do a Terraform validate, then a Terraform plan. And here we see when we execute the plan, we'll be creating 13 resources. And if we scroll to the top, We'll see we're creating an AWS EIP for our NAT Gateway EIP1, as well as 
an EIP for our NAT gateway EIP2. We're also creating an AWS Internet Gateway, and then NAT Gateway 1, and NAT Gateway 2. We have our AWS Route Table for our private Route 1, and an AWS Route Table for the public Route Table. There's an AWS Route Table Association for the public Route Table Association 1, and public Route Table Association 2. We have resources for AWS subnets for private subnet 1 and private subnet 2, as well as public subnet 1 and public subnet 2. So we'll go ahead and apply the plan. Which after just about five minutes, has added our 13 resources. And if we jump into the AWS console, we see our VPC, our internet gateway attached to our VPC, our public and private subnets in the VPC, in availability zones USDs 1A and USDs 1B. Here are our route tables in the VPC, our EIPs, and NAT gateways in the VPC. Okay, now with our main VPC infrastructure in place, let's go ahead and create a module for our EC2 instances, which will be our web servers. To get started inside of the modules folder, I'll create a new folder named web server. And inside the web server module folder, I'll create a new file name webserver.tf. And inside the webserver.tf module, we'll want to declare several different types of AWS resources, starting with two EC2 instances for webserver1 and webserver2. Then we'll want to add an AWS load balancer target group with two target group attachments, one for webserver1, one for webserver2 we'll need an ALB and an ALB listener, as well as an AWS security group. Now, let's start building out these resources. Starting with the AWS security group, I'll add a name, a description, and a VPC ID. And a VPC ID will be passed in via a variable, which we'll have to declare. Then I'll add a dynamic block for the security group ingress, which will loop through each of the ingress rules will pass in as a variable. And each time through this dynamic loop, we'll grab the content from the ingress rules and set the from port to port protocol and CIDR blocks by going to the ingress and grabbing the value for the appropriate property. I'll also add an egress property as well as tags. Moving down to the load balancer, I'll set the load balancer type to application and set its subnets equal to variables which will pass in and the security groups will be set to the AWS security group resource named CC web server security group created above and grabbing its ID. For the AWS load balancer listener, I'll set the load balancer ARN equal to the AWS load balancer resource named CC load balancer declared above and grabbing its ARN property. Here I've hard coded the port and the protocol and then the default action property will set the target group ARN equal to the AWS load balancer target group which we'll declare below. And grabbing its ID. In the load balancer target group, I'll set the name, port, and protocol, and the VPC ID will be populated via a variable which we'll pass in. Here I've defined the values for the health check property and added tags. 
Now, moving into the load balancer target group attachment for web server one, we'll set the target group ARN equal to the AWS load balancer target group resource named CC target group declared above and grabbing its ARN. The target ID will be set to the AWS instance, which is the EC2 instance named web server will declare below and grabbing its ID. We'll do something similar for web server two, this time setting the target ID from the AWS EC2 instance named web server two, which we'll define below. Now for the AWS EC2 instance named web server one, we'll populate the AMI property from a local variable. The instance type will be populated from a local variable as will the key name. And note that before we can add the key name to the local variable, we'll have to jump into the AWS console and create the key. The security group property will be populated from the AWS security group named CC web server security group declared above and grabbing its ID. Then I'll add user data and passing in the commands I want to execute on the EC2 instance wrapped inside of EOF tags. Of course, we'll do something similar for web server two with the difference being the text CC web server two inside of the user data instead of CC web server one. Now I'll go ahead and save the file and we'll move on to creating the variables and locals TF files. Starting with variables.tf inside of the web server folder in the modules folder, I'll add a variable for the public subnets, which will be referenced inside of the AWS instances. Then I'll add a variable for the VPC ID, and then I'll add a validation condition checking to ensure that the length of the VPC ID, which is passed in as a variable from the main.tf file, where we'll define the web server module is greater than four and that the substring contains a VPC dash. Finally, I'll add a variable for the ingress rules, which if we jump back into the web server TF file and go inside of the AWS security group resource, we'll recall the dynamic ingress block, which will loop through the ingress rules passed in as a variable. The ingress rules variable is a list of objects which contain a port, a protocol, and a list of CIDR blocks. The default values specify TCP port on port 80, as well as TCP port on port 22. Now in the web server module folder, I'll create a new file named locals.tf, add a locals block, and add properties for the AMI ID instance type and the key name. And as previously mentioned, we need to jump into the AWS console and create a key pair, which we'll name CCKP. So let's go ahead and do that now. So in the AWS EC2 console, I'll scroll down to network and security and select key pairs, create a key pair, give it the name CCKP and create the key pair. Then let's jump back into VS code. The final thing we need to do inside of the web server module folder before we jump into main and define the module is to create an outputs.tf file. And inside of the outputs, we'll give this a name of load balancer DNS name, a description and a value, which will be equal to the AWS load balancer resource named CC load balancer and grab its DNS name property. Now these values can be referenced from the outputs file inside of our project root folder. Now let's jump into the main TF file and we'll create a module for our web server. The source will point to the web server folder in the modules folder and we'll pass in the CC VPC ID and the CC public subnets because they're variables that are declared inside of the variables.tf file in the web server module. The value for the VPC ID will come from the module named ccvpc, which is declared above in the main.tf file and referenced the VPC ID. The public subnets will also come from the ccvpc module, referencing 
the public subnets. If we go back and look at the outputs.tf file in the web server modules, we see that we're outputting the load balancer DNS name. So in the outputs file in the project's root folder, we'll also add an output for the load balancer, which points to the module named web server and references the load balancer DNS name. Now for the VPC ID, we said we're getting the value from the CC VPC module referencing the VPC ID. Now, this is an output variable declared in the outputs in the VPC module. But we're also passing the public subnets that we said will be referenced from the CC VPC modules public subnets. So we also need to output the public subnets in the VPC's output file. So we'll add an output block here named public subnets and its value will be a list containing the AWS subnet named public subnet one and public subnet two. So now we'll go ahead and save all the files and jump back into the terminal, run a Terraform format, a Terraform validate, and we see we have our error module not installed. And that's because as you remember, we need to run Terraform init to pick up the new web server module we declared in the main.tf. Now we'll run a Terraform validate, which looks good, and a Terraform plan. And the plan tells us we have eight resources to add, zero to change, and zero to destroy. So if we scroll up a bit, We see that our first resource is the AWS instance for Web Server 1. Then we have Web Server 2. There's our load balancer, the load balancer listener, a target group. the target group attachment for web server one and web server two and a web server security group. So we'll run a Terraform apply. And after a little over two minutes, we see the apply is complete with eight resources added. And we have the DNS name for the load balancer. So if we copy this and jump into a new tab in the browser, and here we see our web page from Web Server 2. And if we refresh the page, here's our web page from Web Server 1. Now, with the web servers up and running, we only have a few more resources to add to complete our infrastructure. And those resources are a private route table pointing to two private subnets, each of which contain an instance of an RDS database. So let's jump back into VS Code and create a folder to hold the database module. So inside the modules folder, we'll create a new folder. I'll call it DB. And inside, a new file, db.tf. And in here, we'll want to define several resources for our database layer. We'll need a subnet group, a security group, and an RDS instance. Starting with a subnet group, I'll give it a name and then set the subnet ID properties equal to a list of private subnets that we'll pass in as variables. For the security group, we'll set the VPC ID equal to the VPC we'll pass in as a variable, as well as set the CIDR blocks from variables as well. The RDS database's availability zones will be set via a variable we pass in. The value of the subnet group will be set equal to the AWS DB subnet security group resource declared above named CCDB subnet group and grabbing its name property. The security group IDs will come from the same resource grabbing its ID property.
Here I've set the storage type engine, engine version, and instance class for a Postgres database running on a T2 micro. The name, username, and password properties will be passed in via variables. So I'll go ahead and save this file, then create a variables.tf and add variables for the private subnets, the private subnet ciders, the VPC ID, the database availability zone, the DB name, DB user, and user password, which I've set sensitive to true on both the username and password so that the values aren't displayed in the terminal when we run a Terraform plan and a Terraform apply. However, note that some of these values will be saved in plain text in some of the Terraform configuration files, such as the TF state file, which we'll talk about in depth in the next video. So with the variables.tf file created, I'll go ahead and save it, and then move into the main TF file to define our module. So here I've defined the module for the database and pointed its source to the DB folder in the modules folder. We'll be passing in the VPC ID and the private subnets via properties from the CC VPC module declared above. The private subnet ciders will be passed in from a local variable, as will the database availability zone. The DB username and password values will be populated from variables. So let's jump into our locals.tf file and just validate that we have the data that we need to pass in. And here, as we've seen before, is our VPC cider availability zones, and for the DB instance, the private subnet ciders. And now we'll jump into the variables file and create the DB username and DB password variables. Both the DB username and DB password will be strings. Again, I've set sensitive to true and I've added validation for both variables, one to ensure that the username length is greater than five and that the password is greater than eight. And notice that for the username and password, I haven't set any values. There's no default value set in the variable declarations. And if we look at the terraform.tfvars file, there are no values set for the DB username or password here. As a result, these values will be obtained from the command line. Now, before we jump into the terminal and execute our Terraform commands, there's one change that I need to make in the main TF. And that's to slightly modify the VPC ID and private subnet properties to remove the CC underscore. Because when I exported these values in the VPC module, they were just referenced as VPC ID and private subnets. So now I'll go ahead and save the file and jump to a terminal, do a Terraform format, a Terraform validate. And as I'm sure you guessed, since we didn't do a Terraform init, the database module isn't found. So we'll run Terraform init and Terraform validate. And here we see we have an error message indicating that the object ccvpc does not have an attribute named private subnets. And that's because in the db.tf file where we've defined the resource for the db subnet group, we set the subnet ID properties equal to the private subnets, which are passed in as variables from the main tf file. And the value for this is being obtained from the ccvpc resource declared above and grabbing its private subnets. So what we need to do is jump into the outputs.tf file in the VPC module and add an output block for the private subnets whose value will be references to the AWS subnet resources for private subnet one and private subnet two. So now if we save the outputs file, go back to the terminal once more, and now run Terraform validate. Finally, we see the validation is successful. So now I'll run the Terraform plan and we're prompted for the DB username and password. And we see the plan indicates we have seven resources to add and four to destroy. So let's scroll up and take a look at the plan. So here we see the first resource to be added is our AWS database instance, then the database subnet group and the database security group. 
the resource AWS instance for web server one must be replaced because of a change to the security group, which forces a replacement. And the same for the EC2 instance, web server two. The ALB target group attachments for web server one and web server two must also be replaced because of a change to the target ID. So now we'll go ahead and run Terraform apply. It'll prompt us for our database username again and password. We'll confirm yes to apply the plan. And since it does take a bit of time to provision an RDS instance, our apply completed in just over six minutes. And we see we have seven resources added and four destroyed. Now, if we jump into the AWS RDS console and click databases, we see our Terraform RDS database instance. Now, before we destroy the infrastructure and wrap up the video, I wanna scroll up a bit to where the RDS database instance is being created. And in the output here, I wanna show you that the DB username is displayed as a sensitive value, as is the DB password. However, as previously mentioned, if we jump back into VS Code and look into this terraform.tf state file, which we'll take a deep dive into in the next video and search for password, we'll see the password is displayed in plain text as is the DB username. But when displayed in the console as output, these values are hidden because we added the sensitive attribute to the DB username and DB password variables in our Terraform configuration. And now I'll go ahead and destroy the infrastructure just to clean up the resources before moving on to the next video. So that concludes this video on Terraform modules. In the next video, we'll look at Terraform state. So if you'd like to be notified when I add that video to the playlist, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you found this video informative, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in future videos in this Infrastructure as Code on AWS with Terraform playlist.